Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to this week's HAN Arts and Leisure. I'm Kate Chaplinski filling in for Steve Coulter today who I imagine is enjoying the St. Patrick's Day holiday. We can only hope. We have a great show planned today including a special guest from the Maritime Aquarium later on. But first I'm joined of course by arts editor Sally Sanders and the real dad Mark Schumann. We're going to be talking about how to overcome the post-Oscar blues, The post-Oscar blues Poor Mark. are, are it's, this, <laughs> it's this period and it happens every year and you think, okay, I can handle it this year. And then you get into this period and it's terrible mm. because you look at the movie listings and you're hoping for something that you just can't live without and you don't find it. Right. Because filling the movie theaters right now are either leftovers from last year or the early or the early things that are going to try to grab mass audiences not until next week when batman versus superman <laughs> opens or my big fat great oh, wedding right. two really yeah, yeah. They, they're back they're back they're oh back. my they're back and With this John is the Corbett and they're and back yeah. and they're back and apparently this is the child they have a the daughter I, is, oh. who's getting married though that's the part I, i'm not I, sure I about don't know, but but why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, why? The first one was why? great. And there was already a sequel that, <laughs> that, that, that years ago, so I don't really uh -huh. understand what this is. So here we are in this period where how are we going to endure if we love movies? And mm -hmm. so we've come up with some ideas about how to get through this period. Of course, you know, support groups of, of movie fans who feel abandoned <laughs> is also a good idea. <laughs> but watching movies is fun too. Right, and that's your first idea, is a lot of these are now online and on right. demand. So we, we just finished Oscar season. Uh, some of the movies, many of the movies that were hot contenders, some that won, some that didn't, are now almost all available on home video or on demand or DVD. And if you've missed them, it's a good time it's to catch up. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. it, it, Great and time. a lot are, are good to see again, though, right? They are great to see again. And so I would put at the top of that list, Spotlight. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this year's best picture winner, your pick from the start. Yeah. And and it plays very well on the home screen because it's a it's a tight movie. It's a it's a film that is filled with conversations. Not so a lot really of vistas. To, yeah. You really right. have to listen. And it also is a movie that is very rewatchable because the content is so rich and the characters so interesting. So I would put that at the top. Of at the, the top list. for for rewatching. Yeah. What's the, next? The Big Short. Also Another a good complicated one. Another ensemble. And, and, and the Big Short moves so fast. It's kind of like Aaron Sorkin on a on a treadmill. It just keeps going <laughs> so fast. And so you you really do have to listen. And sometimes. That can be easier when you're watching it at home or watching it on an iPad, whatever it may be. And so it's really a, a movie to listen to. Again, not overly visual that you'll miss a lot if you watch it on a smaller screen. Mm -hmm. I would really recommend that people see Carol. Carol, such a special film. It's not a family film. Still haven't seen it. Means. That's one I haven't not seen. Not a family film. But such a brave film that dares to explore a relationship that at its time was unconventional at best and really gets beyond the intricacies of the relationship to make a, a plea for people who love each other to have the opportunity to love. And it's a very meaningful film. Yeah, it, it kind of snuck into theaters mm -hmm. and then it snuck out again. It was actually playing in Richfield just recently at the, at the Playhouse. Yeah, yeah, you've been talking about yeah. it for a while. But yeah. I, and I just such a special movie mm -hmm. that didn't quite get the Oscar. And attention. that would work on the small screen as very well. Much so. I mean, mm -hmm. not so. that people's screens are that small anymore. Well, I mean, true. Uh, but but it really is a film to watch and to study and to savor 
and a great movie for the small. Would you rewatch The Revenant on a smaller screen I, or I would, not? but I would still look for places where it's showing yeah. on yeah. the big screen because on the big screen it's yeah. so it's magical. So beautiful, yeah. It so is. Magical. The first time you see it, you should see it on the big screen. You really yes. should. Yeah. And, and I, of course, the, when I saw it on the big screen, I was in the second row, and, mm -hmm. and that <laughs> might have been a little close, close too. Yeah. Yeah. It comes at you, you think it's it's coming right at you, and then I would I would give another plea for Steve Jobs, a, a movie okay. that is so well written and so creatively constructed, didn't really make it at the box office, didn't do all that well with the Oscar nominations, didn't win, and, and it's such an interesting film and again very good for viewing on a smaller screen. Um, one that I would throw into is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, oh, which was a, a great loved film it. last year. That totally overlooked. Yeah. Totally overlooked. Yeah. I, I, just, which was too bad, which was too bad. I, the one that I write about this week, Sicario, is yeah. such an exciting film. And even though it is a movie that is best seen on a big screen, I was gonna say it can still be enjoyed on a smaller screen. And now so many people have smaller screens that outblast the big theaters. So it's a, it's a movie that the sound system will enjoy as well. Yeah. So I we're kind of getting into some of the forgotten films as well that people should be watching. Maybe yeah. some that didn't get as much attention, but you should still see. I, I, I think about Brooklyn, a film that certainly can't mm -hmm. be considered forgotten. It was when they marked their final ballot, though, mm -hmm. and had been nominated for several awards. And it's it's such a lovely film, perfect to talk about today. Yes. St. Patrick's Day, yeah. because it celebrates people trying to find a new home in America, coming from Ireland, and trying to hold on to a bit of home as they come over. And that's one that if you haven't seen, it, it is such a, an uplifting film that, that it simply makes you believe in what this country is about, but also what that experience has to Which may, maybe, right now, may be more important than ever to yeah, remember. Yeah, the immigrant, and, and the immigrant experience. Yes. Yes. can be. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, because the Irish were not always accepted no. as, as uh, no. welcome guests. No, and and, and it, it really does, especially moving in that that film or the book in sequences when coming into to Ellis Island, yeah. and, and and it just reminds us that we all come from families that yeah. came from somewhere, and had that first point of entry. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that, uh, that among the others that. Uh, were overlooked. There's a great little film called Legend with Tom Hardy playing twins and Tom Hardy oh, yes. obviously oh, yes. had a very Jesus. good year with yeah. Mad Max and with The Revenant but anytime an actor plays a, a double role it's quite interesting. I think Black Mass, mm -hmm. the, Johnny, I that Depp, on my list. the yeah. Johnny Depp film that essentially is the same plot uh, as, as The Departed but is quite interesting and, and Johnny Depp for all of the broad, exaggerated characters he's played over the years, every once in a while, he just reminds us that he can act. And I think in a less crowded year, he would have been one of the best actor nominees. How did you feel about Macbeth? Yeah, I, 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 I don't think Macbeth is a filmable play. I, okay. It's just not a filmable play. It's, a, it's so dark. And when it's staged in, in live theater, so much of the violence is suggested. Mm. But several years ago, Roman Polanski tried to make a film of it, and it was kind of during one of his darker periods. <laughs> and I mean, that movie was so violent. And this film isn't quite as violent, but it just doesn't quite happen. I think- um, Great actors in Michael it, Michael Fassbender could do anything. Yeah. And Marion Cotillard could do anything, but it just doesn't quite happen. I think the, the, you know, the challenge with Shakespeare is he wrote these very long plays that if you try to fit them into conventional movie length, something has to be cut. So yeah. it's, it's okay. It's not great hmm. by any means. When I, when I was doing my research about forgotten movies, the one that I came up with was Mistress America. Did you see that? I Let's did see that. Mistress America. That's, and I, and that's I, uh, Noah, Noah Bomba. Bomba. And it's kind of Noah Bomba on autopilot. It's not, it's not uh, like Francis Ha, you know, which is such a, a wonderful Noah Bamba film, but it's okay. I don't, I don't remember it all that well. Well, Greta, Greta Gerwig it's again, lovely, and, lovely. And, but the one that I like is Lola Kirk, who, who's mm. in Mozart in the Jungle, and she's such an appealing actress. I haven't seen this, but it's on my list to see now, yeah, it's, just it's because of her. I, I, I can't say that I was that, was that taken by it. I don't remember it that well. That's no, terrible. That's if you a good don't sign, remember right? it, it's that's not a good sign. sign. <laughs> it's, it's about a millennial who sort of takes on uh, um, right. an 18-year-old and, and is teaching her the ways of Brooklyn. 
Oh wow! And and interesting you know, how concept. To be cool. Yeah. And if we're thinking huh. about Noah Baumbach films that were overlooked, I have to then think about when we were young, which actually I liked more. Okay. It's the Ben Stiller, oh, yes. Naomi oh, Watts, yes. where they're. Was that last year as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early yeah. last year, yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay. But yeah, it, that was funny. Yeah, it was it was fun, and he he was in a lighter mood at that point. Yeah. I think that. Well, it, maybe fun. Greta Ger Gerwig didn't write that one. I mean, she co-wrote this, this yeah, I, Mistress I, I America, and maybe that's more remember. from her experience than, yeah. I can't, than I, his. I can't remember. I do think if people haven't seen Room, uh, yeah. Room is certainly a film that works well on the smaller screen. I would be really careful with Room if watching, if, 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 if it's not a family film. I right. think it could be quite yeah. frightening. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there's some children. dark things. And, yeah. and, and I think it is, a, Anytime parents choose to share films with children, give yourself the time to talk about the film both before and after. If there are things in the film that could possibly be upsetting, it's a whole lot better to say, hey, this is what's gonna happen. We can stop it, this is great, this is home video. We have this pause button and then talk about things after. But Rue might be real careful about mm, Yeah. Well, we have a lot more to talk about. We're going to talk about creating your own film festival, yes, some reheatable movies reheatable, as well, yes. which I love. But that's coming up after this. We're going to step out for a quick break, and we have more with The Real Dad after this. Darian Sport Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sport Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Can't wait for it to get warmer so you can start fishing again? Get over to the Dock Shop, where they have the latest in fishing tackle, marine electronics, boating supplies, and more. But remember, the Dock Shop isn't your average tackle shop. You'll also find the finest selection of nautical apparel, jewelry, home decor, and gifts in New England. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DocShop.com. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203-770-8869. 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. And we're back on HAN Arts and Leisure. I'm Kate Chaplinski filling in this week for Steve Coulter. I'm back with the real dad, Mark Schumann and Sally Sanders. We're talking now about creating your own film festival. I love this idea. Well, yeah. The thing is, here we are in this post-Oscar period where there's mm -hmm. nothing really to go see. And so think about topics that you're interested in. Do a little Google search and you can find all kinds of movies that you might enjoy. We were playing around with some topics that we, we like and it's very interesting at this point to look at how movies treat politics, although 
we would have to say that this is truly a case of truth is stranger than fiction. <laughs> and, and we're almost to baseball season, so yeah. it's a great time to watch yeah. baseball movies. We're nearing the end of the school year, and there's some movies that have treated graduation and such things as, as, as fun events. So there's all kinds and of And today content. is St. Patrick's Day, and, of and, course. And, and, so, okay, so what would, you, what would you pick for your favorite? Well, of course, the, the, the quintessential Irish film is The Quiet Man oh, with John Wayne no. and Maureen O'Hara. And, and, you can't and get any better than that for no, atmosphere. You, you, and, you can't. And, uh, and, the, and the, the Technicolor camera was made for Maureen O'Hara. Yeah. And that, that red yeah. hair. And, oh, she was and just the lovely. the green eyes, oh, yes. just lovely. And there's another earlier Mar Maureen O'Hara film that is, is quite good, even though it's actually about a Welsh village, which is called oh, How Green Is My Valley. That's, yeah. a, that's a delight, film. yeah. Lovely film. What a lovely. And that was, in, was that in color? No, black that and was, white. That's what I thought. John Ford, 1941. Walter Pigeon? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Walter Pigeon, who was always the kind man down the street. Yes, he was. Schoolmaster yes. in this one. But uh, the Irish is great. One of the, our favorite double features one year was when we were quite fascinated by Truman Capote. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so we watched Capote with Philip Seymour Hoffman, which is a marvelous film, all about when Capote writes In Cold Blood. And then we watched In Cold Blood. So we could see two mm. interpretations. Again, not really a family film unless right. you're watching with older teenagers. But I'm fascinated by these movies that, that talk about politics because we're in such a political season. Yeah. And you look back at what we can learn from politics. And there is an obscure movie from 1964 with Henry Fonda and Cliff Robertson called The Best Man. And it's all about what happens at a contested convention. Oh, wow. When a Never candidate, it, it was a play by Gore Vidal that was redone on Broadway a few years ago. But the candidate, the most likely candidate, the seemingly most popular candidate arrives at the convention. He's kind of ahead. And then there's the most likely opponent, and he's charging. And then there's the old man of the party who refuses to give his endorsement, and then what happens in this contested convention. And it's, of course, back in the politics of smoke-filled rooms and backroom deals, but it's kind of interesting given what we're facing. Who was the good guy in it? Cliff Robertson. Well, not really the good guy. I can't tell you who the good guy is because that would be a spoiler. Oh, alert. okay. It's Henry Fonda, Cliff Robertson, yeah. Melvin Douglas. Oh, Melvin Douglas. He's uh, the, the uh, old call. E. Adams. Oh, I can't remember the rest. Oh, but Melvin been, Douglas think, is the is the party so. boss. I think if I'm getting oh, a, he would no, be. it's Lee Tracy. I'm getting <gasps> I'm Lee oh. Tracy. Wonderful character. Yeah, yeah. Actor. So that's a great film. I I think about the American president with Michael Douglas. Oh and yeah, Annette Benning. Mm -hmm. That's the, lovely. The, our first glimpse into how Aaron Sorkin viewed the White House, and it, it's this kind of marvelous fantasy. It's a great film. Uh, George Clooney's Ides of March, mm -hmm. which is a more recent about look that at, the, yes, yeah. at politics and, and journalism. That's, a, mm -hmm. I think, a very good movie. But perhaps the ultimate is The Candidates from 1972. That's Redford? Robert Redford yeah. uh, wow. won an Oscar for <laughs> its screenplay. <laughs> and, it, and it's a film that predicts that we will be in a world where politics becomes so much an entertainment uh, experience that we somewhat forget what we're voting for and what we should be thinking of when we vote. That's sort mm. of the uh, Bob Roberts, right? Tim Robbins film? Yep. Same thing? Very, very much the same kind. Yeah. Bullworth was very similar in yeah. that. And, and all, I think one reason why movie makers keep going back to politics, and you think of in the 40s, Mr. Smith goes to Washington and State of the Union, we always look for the best in our in our politicians we always look for heroes and and movies love stories about heroes sometimes our heroes disappoint and that creates conflict creates drama yeah and yeah. conflict so that's a so political films are yeah mm, yeah well baseball baseball films. baseball baseball yes. okay very topical the Total natural love. the natural yeah that's that's one of the best um and again robert redford and and he just he just makes it work. It's a it's a screenplay that's you know a little gooey, a little. and you know Glenn Close is the woman in white, and Kim Basinger is the is kind of the villainous, and Barbara Hershey is a villainous. But it's so good mainly because Redford can play anything. It yeah. makes Roy Hobbs feel very no not Roy Hobbs uh, mm -hmm. makes him feel Roy mm -hmm. Hobbs. Anyway. 
Uh, of course, Field of Dreams. Yes. Of course, of course, of course. Bull Durham. It's a big one. And yes, Bull Durham, I think, is my favorite baseball film. Why? I like the cynicism of it. Mm -hmm. I, li I like, I like when, mm -hmm. when um, Kevin Costner is telling Tim Robbins to just throw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and this is kind of a reheatable movie for me because I can watch A League of Their Own over, over and over, over again. again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great so, film. Reheatable. Yes. So in, in the Schumann family, the official definition of reheatable is if you're traveling, you really want to have a copy on your iPad in case you have a delay. <laughs> if, you're, if you're bored, you always want to have a copy so you can watch something to kind of relax you or pass the time. So what are some of your favorite reheatables? Well, there's many. But I actually saw something that you added in there that is a reheatable movie for me, Steel Magnolias. Oh, I, oh, can, it, I it, love that movie. It, I've seen it more times than I can ever count. It, 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 it's interesting. One time I was flying back from London and I sat next to Robert Harling who wrote the play and wrote the film. And I said, do you realize how useful this movie is? Because if you want to simply laugh, you watch the first half. Yep. If you want to cry, you watch the second half. Mm -hmm. And if you want the whole experience, you watch the whole thing. It never gets oh. old. But never. do you now? Do you sit in an airport and cry when you're when you? I mean, I would be. Uh, well, yes, I, I, when yeah. I watch a movie, I, I sob. I, have been known, I remember one time on an airplane watching Field of Dreams, and uh, when he has a catch yeah. with his can't dad, watch yeah. that mm -hmm. without crying. And this man I was sitting next to in his thick Australian accent. Said, what is it about this movie? I've been on five <laughs> flights this week. Every person sitting next to me has watched that movie. Everyone is it's crying. crying. Is, I said, well, it's complicated. Our yeah. fathers, they didn't play catch with us. <laughs> so, but still, Magnolia always gets you. Always it, it gets always, me. Oh, it always, always gets me. And I've cried many times on planes watching so, movies. <laughs> so if, if, if you love that movie, and this mm -hmm. is the fun thing about reheatable movies, when you love them, you want to get to know them better. So. If you have the DVD or access to it, watch it again and listen to Herbert Ross do his director's commentary because mm. you learn so many things. The film was shot in sequence, which never happens in the movie, and it was all shot in real places. There were no sets. Yeah, well, you could tell, yeah. It's a real yeah. house. Right. It's a real place, parlor. Huh? Real beauty parlor. Mm -hmm. it, it's all done. He wanted a very, he felt that with material that could be that over the top. He wanted it to be very natural. Uh, when we think of, when I think of reheatable movies, so many of them are Shirley MacLaine movies. <laughs> Obviously, she's wonderful in Steel Magnolias, Postcards from the Edge, mm -hmm. where she does her take on kind of playing Debbie Reynolds to Meryl Streep's Carrie Fisher over and over yeah. again. Terms of Endearment, over and over again. Right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. film. And so reheatables are really fun. What are some of yours? The Princess Bride. Yes. The Princess That's Bride is one. I mean, it's In fact, if, if we think about how many times on this show you've mentioned the Well, Princess I know. Bride. I know. How much we all quoted in our daily right. lives. Yes. I mean, there's that's so many. A, but see, that's a good indication. And yeah. I go back to Steel Magnolias. It has so many one-liners mm. that we quote all the time. That's when they did a remake of, didn't go over so well. It was made for TV. Yeah. I didn't even no. watch it, so it, I can't it, say. No, it just, it didn't work because you didn't have the, when you think about the, the choices that are made when a film is cast, and that is a film that is so perfectly cast, and mm -hmm. those, those women are so willing to work together. When I also think of reheatable movies, I go to Some Like It Hot. I go to Jack Lemmon movies, Some Like It Hot, yeah. The Apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, which I just rewatched again. And the thing about Some Like It Hot that is, is so great, it, it, this is a film that my kids have watched since they were young. <laughs> and they always enjoyed it, even when they didn't really understand it and as they began to understand it better. It's, well, you can, uh, you can appreciate it just from the slapstick. Just from the th and, it, and it's so fresh, it never gets old, which is what makes reheatable movies mm -hmm. so fun is that no matter how many times you see them, they are they still surprise right. and they still please. And uh, I think there's some that kind of bring you back to the point in your life when you first watched it or when you first really yes. enjoyed watching it. Yeah. For me, that's almost famous. I watched it oh. so many oh. times over and over again with multiple people. I was like, you have to watch this. And I sat them down and made them yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah. And it just yeah. brings me back yeah. to that time. Well, and you think about 
movies about this time of year and graduation, we've talked on this show so many times about The Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. You think about The Breakfast Club, you think about Grease. You, uh, another that they tried to remake. Yeah. It just wasn't mm -hmm. the same. But the thing about Grease is, of course, okay, they're far too old to be believable that they're in high school. <laughs> but they know that we know that they're right. too old. Yeah, it, so it works. It, it, it yeah. works. It works. <laughs> and it's so much fun. And, and you just, you just love it. And, and the, it, this is the kind of movie to watch when you're ironing or when you're doing other things, or doing your income taxes, <laughs> and then you have to look up when a certain sequence mm -hmm. comes across. And it's yeah. a great way to survive this period. Well, and, and, and a final one just for, for um, movies that are quoted extensively. Mm -hmm. The Life of Brian, I'll always turn that on if it's, if it's available. That's <laughs> just so on funny. so many levels so, so much funny. fun. So funny. And that's a... It, it, it's also that movie celebrates innuendo. I mean, here we are <laughs> at a time when so many things are so obvious and 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 lack wit, and that movie is so. Well, good. it makes you feel smart if you get the jokes. I <laughs> think. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so watch it in the morning. Watch yeah. It so. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark, thanks so much Thank for you. joining us today. Always a pleasure. Yeah. We're going to take a break. When we come back, our special guest, Chris Loin from the Maritime Aquarium. So keep watching. We'll be back right after this. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. We're back on this week's edition of HAN Arts and Leisure. I'm Kate Chaplinsky with Sally Sanders, and we're joined now by Chris Loyne from the Maritime Aquarium. So happy to have you, Chris. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Now, a big part of what the aquarium does, obviously, is support, you know, Long Island Sound and, and educate yes. people about Long Island Sound. That's a big part of the mission. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're, we're actually the only aquarium in the world um, that devotes itself to Long Island Sound. Mm -hmm. And Long Island Sound is this amazing body of water. It's, it's um, an estuary, which means it's sometimes salt, sometimes fresh. The temperature changes. It's one of the shallower bodies of water that are studied. Um, but it was named by the U.S. Uh, government, the U.S. Congress, as an estuary of national significance. Mm. I did not know that. Fun fact there. <laughs> and um, when you look at the number of people that live around this incredible body of water, and it's just, it always amazes me. All you need is a third or a fourth story glimpse of water, and your rent goes up, your mm -hmm. value goes up. So there's actually, actually a lot of people who have a vested interest in keeping this body right. of water yeah. in 
Even in Richfield, we have a road called Soundview, <laughs> where you can stand. Is there a, really? There's a, there's yeah. a road in Richfield called Soundview, Sound wow. and you can see the Long Island Sound. Awesome. And and so we have a vested interest too. Yeah, and I have to say though, for some of us that grew up around here, you somewhat take it for granted a little bit. And I think yeah. what's great about the Maritime is that you show people some of the amazing things that are happening in Long Island Sound, which many of us don't realize. Yeah. What's really neat about aquariums is I can show you what's in Long Island Sound. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get wet. Exactly. Um, so, but the, <laughs> or in come into contact with it yourself and maybe get a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have lots of those opportunities. Actually, we encourage people to. Right. To me, the magic moment at the Maritime Aquarium, a horseshoe crab mm -hmm. is perhaps the scariest looking thing alive. <laughs> it's a you know? prehistoric looking monster. It's got monster, jaggy yeah. edges, it's got claws and things mm -hmm. and, and, and all this stuff happening and when you turn it upside down that telson starts flipping back and forth yeah. and when you can get a two-year-old or four-year-old to touch that animal and get over that fear, that's, yes. that's a moment. That's a magic moment to me. That's what sort of what we're about. Mm -hmm. You get close to that animal and realize, oh, okay, this thing is not what it appears to be and science is maybe something that I can get involved in. Well, that's one of the things you have also is the, is the jiggle of jelly, which is, I think, for a lot of people, one of the scarier things yeah, in the island sound. That. So we had a lot of fun bringing that in. So yeah. you can touch a live jellyfish without oh, getting stung. okay. I didn't um, know that. They are moon jellyfish, which are mm -hmm. found in Long Island Sound. So we always tell people, you can touch these jellies, but don't go up just touching any random jelly you yeah. might occur in nature <laughs> mm -hmm. because jellyfish, uh, like bees and wasps, have, you know, little stings and big stings, and yeah. these have almost no stings. So. Oh, wow. And so what else is happening at the aquarium right now? We're in springtime, people are out and about, what's going on? So one of the really cool ways that we can show you, too, what's in Long Island Sound is our new research vessel. It's the only hybrid electric powered research vessel in North America, runs on electric power. And just when did you get it? Last, uh, last Just last, it just came online really the end of last summer. Right. So we've had a great run with it now. And the standard cruise is a two and a half hour thing we call the marine life study cruise. You'll go out on the boat and we'll bring up life from all different parts of the water column. So we start with a plankton seine that there's an onboard microscope and you can see why, you know, pe people think Long Island Sound is murky and therefore not good. It's actually more alive. When you see those coral reefs in the Bahama with that crystal clear water, it's because the water is dead. There's nothing alive oh. in it. Long mm -hmm. Island Sound is an amazing soup of plankton and, and baby animals and all kinds of things happening. Mm -hmm. um, then we do an otter trawl, bring up all kinds of things that live in that middle range. And then finally the mud grab, which is really cool, is a little <laughs> dredge that goes down. We dump it out in the boat and all the people on the boat are sorting through <laughs> and picking out the clams and the worms and the crabs and things that live there. Oh, that sounds like a good time. How do you do that? There uh, the, yeah, the Marine Life Study Cruise mm -hmm. goes out on a uh, regular basis. It'll go out more frequently in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're also doing, um, so we do seal spotting cruises in the wintertime. Oh, I bet those How are How was that this winter? Did you have uh, really, pretty good? Did really, really well. And the seals are still out there. Just last Sunday, they saw 10. Wow. So the seals are still here. This is, I like to tell people, Long Island Sound is sort of their Riviera Beach. This is where they come <laughs> for the wintertime. Uh -huh. When it gets warmer, they'll go back up to Nova Scotia. Um, Labrador. When do they usually leave? What, what's the... The seal cruises are generally, seal spotting are generally once a um, month or twice mm -hmm. a month. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, they're all sold out this year. Oh. Wow, um, that's good. It's been very, very popular. News. Yeah, what is it about seals? We just love them. It, it's, they're? they're amazing animals <laughs> they are. to watch and they haul out on the rocks, you know, because they don't need to be in the water. Mm -hmm. And um, and to see them in the wild is just a thrill. And last summer at Long Island Sound, we had whales, right? Mm. We did. We had three humpback whales come into Long Island Sound. So maybe whale spotting cruises will be the next. Well, uh, it, it, it's certainly possible. We were, you know, we were excited about going out and trying. We were hoping to run into and see them. Uh -huh. um, we believe they came in because um, we had a real rich um, bait fish mm. uh, population this uh -huh. last summer. So hopefully, they, we, the, the thought is there were three juveniles and maybe they'll be back. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, one was killed by a boat strike. So we're uh. actually going to offer, uh, if you go on our website, we're going to try to offer a little uh, informational seminar about how many feet you should stay away from them. And, you know, the whales, uh, Long Island Sound is fairly shallow, so the whales are mm -hmm. up at the surface and mm -hmm. down quite a bit. And obviously boaters around here may not know what to do if you encounter a whale. Exactly. Because it's not common. The, the first thing is don't get too close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and they do breach. They do that wonderful thing where they'll jump up and crash in. And wow. uh, if you're in a small boat, you don't want to be too close. Oh, yeah. Or under it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or under it. Good point, Sally. <laughs> and the other thing we're doing with the boat is fun. We're doing, um, we initiated uh, sunset cruises. 
That's so delightful. we have an adults only sunset cruise oh. where we'll have a little signature cocktail drink and uh, go out and cruise around a little bit. And again, what's cool about this this propulsion is that it's silent. I mean, it's just if you've ever been on a, a, a diesel boat where oh, it's just thrumming, right. thrumming, thrumming yeah. all the time. Oh, that's um, beautiful. It's it's virtually silent. It, it, it's electric motors and there's a little bit of blower over the batteries and mm -hmm. that's it. And when are those happening? Um, those are scheduled. So the next one is coming up in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, and the next actually the next sunset cruise is uh, this Saturday, March nineteenth, oh, and wonderful. then April sixteenth. Great. How can people get tickets, by the way? Uh, right online. Just go to the maritimeaquarium.org mm -hmm. and um, click the Buy Now button. You'll be all set. All right. Now, I have to ask, what are the most still the most popular exhibits at the aquarium? That Sharks are number love? one. Yes. Absolutely. I think we even have a little feeding video, Eric. Can we uh, check out that feeding video? I love that. We had a ball with this. So what <laughs> we did is we, we, we feed our sharks um, by a pole mm -hmm. and individual fish, and that way we can weigh how much each shark eats, and that tells us about their health. So we had the idea we put a GoPro on the end of that pole. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. What's really neat is when you see these sharks at the aquarium, they're pretty bucolic, they swim pretty slowly. But when it's feeding time, they turn into sharks very quickly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and these are sharks that you'd find in Long Island Sound. Absolutely. The, the Sound, sound sh Tiger sharks are found all throughout Long uh -huh. Island Sound. Uh -huh. I was good. We were talking before we went on air about the temperature in the sound. I mean, everybody's aware that we've we've had a pretty warm winter and spring, and the sound is a little warmer than usual. Yeah, I think we're probably two to three weeks ahead of schedule yeah, in, so. in, in it warming up. Um, and it remains to be seen what the results of that may be. Yeah. Um, some animals will come out of uh, hibernation earlier, um, and some animals don't necessarily hibernate but they go into sort of very quiescent mode and slow down crabs for example will burrow in the mud and, and wait to come up um, the jellyfish are all in their um, early stages the fire are just settled on the bottom the polyps mm -hmm. and then are waiting to bloom as it gets a little warmer um, the, um, are the stri birds earlier too? The, the birds might be earlier. I don't know. I mean, I've been seeing robins and that kind of thing. And I'm yeah, sure, right. but, you know, I try to remember from year to year is that sooner or mm -hmm. later than it has been. Mm -hmm. I think last, uh, well, I know last year we had the coldest February since they started keeping records in Connecticut. Um, this year I'd venture Big to change. guess we had one of the <laughs> warmest. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 A lot can change in a year. You also do bird watching cruises, I think. That's part of the seal spotting cruises. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, because of the migratory board, birds that come into Long Island Sounder. And um, I love the, you know, the delightfully named buffleheads and mergansers, and, but we do see quite a bit of those. Yeah. I, I like the American oyster catchers. I think they're just the most gorgeous bird Amazing. out there. Amazing. Yeah. And ospreys have been coming back big time now right. in Long Island Sound. So yeah. they're, they're actually now off of the threatened endangered list and are doing quite well. Yeah, they're thriving. That's good to hear. And, you know, we did talk about movies in the first part of this show, so we should mention that there's an exciting movie coming to the IMAX at the Maritime, right? Yeah, so I'm always second run for movies, but mm -hmm. I've got a pretty big screen, biggest in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, tall as a six-story building. It's as wide as two school buses parked end to end. <laughs> and we're going to be showing Star Wars. I don't Ooh. have my start date yet. It's any right. day now. Um, How long a run will you get with that? Um, probably as long as I can fill, keep it, it, up? Going, fill it up. Yeah. yeah. So we'll at least Excellent. run it through spring break. So we'll have it for four to six And you said weeks. 2D, not 3D. We're, yeah. So they, right. the exciting part about our Star Wars mm -hmm. compared to anything else you saw in a theater or anywhere in Connecticut we still have our ancient 70 millimeter film projector, mm -hmm. oh. which means there is a battle scene in Star Wars that you only saw the letterboxed version. Mm. We're going to go up to the full, because it was shot with an IMAX camera. Wow. So you will actually see oh, part so of the So the real fanboys got to be see. out for this. Yeah, uh, they're pretty Including excited. a couple behind uh, <laughs> <laughs> the set over here who are kind of excited. So I, I also, I keep telling my boss this may be the last IMAX ever done with film. But Chris hmm. Nolan, the director, is a huge supporter of film. And he's producer on something called Batman vs. Superman. Oh. So there will be film prints available for that as oh. well. I won't get so a first that could run. Become, but right, but it'll, that's it'll gonna get be, there. We're, uh, if I can get my hands on a print, <laughs> we're going to show it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming and talking Thanks to us today. Me. Again, give the website just so people can get more information. Yep, it's Maritime Aquarium, and it's .org. All right. All right, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Sally, thanks for letting me co-host today. Yes, well, thanks for help. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to wrap things up on this week's HAN Arts and Leisure. Of course, Sally and Steve will be back next week. Or no, we the 31st. We're off next week. We'll, next they'll week. be back the 31st, so be sure to check it out. Have a great St. Patrick's Day. It's all